Hey, what's up coders? Welcome to One Little Coder. In this Python tutorial, Applied NLP tutorial, we're going to learn how is it ridiculously easy to do PCA on text data. PCA stands for Principal Component Analysis. It's one of the most popular dimensionality reduction technique that you would see in machine learning. So what we are going to do is do PCA on text data. Now you might ask me like, why do I have to do PCA on text data? If you ever had to build text classification models or anything to do with text data, every time you would find some way to make some sense out of the raw text data, because you have to convert that unstructured text data into some structured format. So PCA is going to help us in doing that. So let's say you want to build a text classification model. So in our case, we have taken a data set with YouTube video titles. Let's say from the title, you want to predict whether a particular video will belong to travel industry, food industry, art and music industry or history industry. So if you want to classify the particular title or video title into any of these categories, you would want to build a text classification model. But before you do a text classification model, you have to somehow convert the existing title, which is an English text into some kind of structured num number numeric format. And PCA can help you in doing that. And as you can see on your screen right now, PCA has done a really, really good job in classifying or categorizing your existing text based on the category. So what we can see is the existing text title would be a really good representative of the categories that the YouTube, the YouTube videos have got. So I'm going to show you how to do this in a very, very simple format. Probably you might have already seen text hero library, but if you have not seen, this is just a couple of lines of Python code and you have PCA done for text data. If this is something that interests you, let's get started. So I've got a YouTube, I've got a Kaggle notebook. So this Kaggle notebook is built on top of a YouTube data set. Let me open the data set for you. So if you see this data set, let me bring it big. You can see there are four columns. The first one is the link of the video. The second one is the title of the video. The third one is the description of the video. And the fourth one is the category. And as you can see from our input data set, we have got four categories, travel, food, art, music, and history. So this is what, this is the output of our, this Kaggle notebook, what we're going to build. So first thing that you have to do is go to the Kaggle data set link and then create a new notebook. After you create a new notebook, you would you would come here just like this, but you would come on an empty page. To save you from this, I'm going to link this notebook in the YouTube description. So all you have to do is click the notebook, you know, upvote if you want and click copy and edit, which means you will be able to work on the same notebook that I'm showing you in this particular video. So after you reach here, the first step that you have to do is you have to start your Kaggle notebook session. After you do that, you have to install the library text hero. Text Hero is the library that we are going to use to do PCA. And of course, you can use Text Hero for a lot of other things. But primarily, our objective is to do a little bit of text cleaning and then do TF-IDF. TF-IDF stands for Term Frequency Inverse Document Frequency. And from that, do PCA and then use that PCA to build the scatter plot chart that I had shown you before. So first step, install Text Hero. After you install Text Hero, if you are using Kaggle Notebook like me, you might face an error if you import text hero because of the different versions of Spacey. So to avoid that, I'm doing a Spacey model download. I'm myself downloading the Spacey model. This may not be required if you're doing it on your local machine. I'm doing this specially because if I do not do this, I might get an error when I import text hero. So to avoid that, I'm downloading the model myself to avoid any discrepancy between the Spacey version and the model version. So first mandatory step, install text hero next download the spacey english model that is required for us to do everything else in the future section after we do this i think our setup is fine now you have to import the required library we need pandas library to read the input data set and we need text hero to to of course you know do the text hero stuff so import pandas as pd import text hero as hero so you can import it as th if you want but you know text hero documentation says import text hero as hero. So I'm just sticking, sticking to it. The next step is you have to import, you have to read the input CSV file. I'm, I'm just going and copying the, copying the file path here. And I'm going to just come back and then paste the file here. So that will give me the input file path. And then I can just simply read the input file path. Let me run this for you. And after that, I can show you that head, the, the, the head of the file, 
the data frame. So you can see the same thing that I showed you at the start of the video. You've got a link, the title, description, travel. The things that we are interested in, we are interested in title and we are interested in travel. We are going to use title to do PCA and then we are going to use travel like category. Sorry, did I say travel? I'm so sorry. We have to use category to kind of see if the title matches with the category. But we are not going to build a text classification. Rather, we are going to end this video when we build the PCA model, the principal component analysis. At this point, we have the input data set. We have the libraries loaded. Just, just a little bit of meta information. We want to see what is the number of rows that we have got. We don't want to have like millions of rows and run out of our Kaggle memory. So just making sure that this, this data set is within the limit. So in my case right now, I've got like about 3,600 3, rows. Um, if, if you're going to hit anything about the 10,000 or 20,000, it's highly possible that you might hit um, out of memory error on Kaggle. So just make sure that your data set um, does not have a large amount of like you, you don't have like, uh, you know, thousands and thousands of rows. Um, if you have it, then you just have to split your data set into multiple small pieces and then do PCA separately and then finally combine your data set. That's, that's your solution. But in our case, we have just 3600 rows, so it doesn't really matter. Now we are going to enter into the real territory where we are going to create PCA column for the YouTube data set. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. But what we are going to do is we're not going to do it at one step. We are going to do multiple step and you can see how we have piped. So we're going to take the title. Okay. We're going to take the title. The column name is title. You can see we're going to take the title, clean the title. Just, just do basic cleaning, text cleaning, and then calculate TF-IDF. TF-IDF, like I said, stands for term frequency, term frequency and inverse document frequency so that's a totally entirely different topic altogether if i have to make a video i can make a video on term frequency and inverse document frequency but you can just quickly go online and then search for tf idf and then you would probably get a pretty nice uh, chart that looks like this like um, you, you've got you've got this car and you, you can basically understand how tf idf is calculated and this is this is basically a very popular way for people to convert the text data um, into some kind of numeric data before doing any machine learning. So you have like a lot of different explanation about how TF-IDF is calculated. Go read about it. That is beyond the scope of this video. And uh, I'm, not, I'm not going to get into that. So we're going to say, take the title, clean the title, calculate term frequency and inverse document frequency. And now start calculating the PCA. So you're going to pipe every single operation and then you're going to store the final value inside this. I'm going to run this and then you can see it doesn't take a lot of time. Even when we have got 3600 rows, it doesn't take a lot of time. So the how much time it takes depends upon a lot of factors. One, the number of rows that you have got, the length of the text that you have got. So these, these, these are like two factors that would take time. And if you start adding more text pre processing, that might also take more time. At this point, our PC has been successfully calculated. So I'm going to show you um, YT. I'm going to do yt.head. Okay, to show you like how is it so you can see the PCA values are there like the the, the component values are there and uh, now we are going to visualize this component value once again you don't have to go to any third party library to do the visualization thanks to thanks to the text hero team the developer who has actually thought through this and then helped you with the scatter plot method um, from text hero so you can simply say hero dot scatter plot okay so hero dot scatter plot and what are you trying to like visualize? You're trying to visualize this, this data frame YT. And what is the what is the value that you're going to visualize? You are trying to visualize the column PCA. So as you see, the column PCA has got a list element. So every value has got two. Um, and you're going to visualize that that's a column. And uh, do you do you want to colorize like you want do you want to give a color so that you know you can connect with the target variable in the in our case. If we happen to do a text classification, this would become a target variable. So do you want to colorize it? If you want, you can use this color. If you do not want, you can leave it out. And what is the title of this video? So I'm going to just disable color for now. I'm going to run this and I'm going to display this to you. And as you can see, you can see kind of a pattern here. So the pattern is OK. So first of all, we have done PCA and uh, this is the scatter plot after we have done PCA. You can see like we, we kind of see like um, like there is a there is a pattern here like you can see you know clusters forming here again like i don't i didn't want to use the word cluster here um because this is definitely not a clustering exercise 
But again, if you want to do clustering, you can still take this PCA value and start doing clustering on top of it, which you can, as you can see, might give you really good um, non-overlapping clusters. But keeping clustering exercise aside, uh, let us say we want to see how these this this particular PCA value pairs or uh, relates to the category that we have already identified. And we have not done any classification. We have not done any clustering. All we are going to do is if we have to see this this PCA values that scatter plot through the lens of existing categories that that um, that we have got in the input data set, how would it look? So I'm going to go ahead and then say change the color. Okay, change the color and then give the category as the color. So now when I run this, you can you can actually see. So I'm going to I'm going to show you like this. You can actually see that. Let me make it slightly. Yeah, you can see that all the travel related are here and food related are here and art and music is like completely separate. And then you've got history somewhere overlapping between this. So you, you I mean, it's quite obvious that if we are going to use this PCA to build a text classification model or if you want to do um, clustering, it's highly likely that you might get a good result because the titles really seem to have some kind of relation with the categories that you have got. So now you can, you know, you can go ahead and then start looking at this. You know the kind of values that we are talking about, like what is the range. Now you can filter your data set based on that and then start looking at the title to understand how does it look. But but again, like, like I just said, um, that's not what we are going to do here. We're going to stop this video here where we have successfully managed to do PCA. Again, PCA stands for Principal Component Analysis. One of the most popular dimensionality reduction techniques. So if you've got a lot of dimensions, you're going to use PCA to reduce the dimension. And that's exactly what we have done. In a typical text data set, you would probably end up with a very sparse matrix. Um, if you if you go with a bag of words method, if you go with a um, count vectorizer, whatever you use, you would end up with a lot of columns. What we have done is like reduce all the columns using PCA technique and then now use PCA, the PCA, the component values the values that you got after doing PCA to do visualization and you can actually see that the title is really relating to the categories and um, and you might think whether it will be applicable for all the all the text related data it may not I have actually tried two different data sets before this before arriving at this data set where I could actually show you the relation between the PC and categories but for the for the previous two data set it didn't make a lot of sense you have to keep in mind that something that has to do with some element in title, right? If you're trying to use title to predict something completely relevant, let's say month or something else may not be relevant. But if you're using title to predict um, or, uh, you know, identify or categorize, label, um, classify, whatever you would like to do the task with respect to something related to title categories or labels, or maybe even, you know, you can you can group the video popularity into a bunch of buckets and then try to understand whether one type of video is being good, other type of video is not doing good. The, like, the potential is really enormous. Uh, to quickly summarize what we have done, we have installed the library text hero, downloaded the, the spacey model, we have imported the required libraries, read the input data set, which is YouTube title data set in the column of our interest is title and category. And then we have taken the title, cleaned the title, did TFID of term frequency and inverse document frequency, did PCA, stored the PCA in the column PCA. And now using the PCA, we did a scatter plot and we labeled the color, like we colored the data points using the category. And we can see that we have really, really got a very good um, PCA uh, that, that can relate, relate with um, the categories that we have got. I hope this video was helpful to you in understanding how to use text hero to literally the, like the easiest way to do PCA for your text data and the potential is enormous. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section. Otherwise, this Kaggle notebook would be in the YouTube description. All you have to do is click the Kaggle notebook, reach Kaggle, log in with your Kaggle account, copy and edit, and then upload if you want. And if you like this video, please give a thumbs up, share it with your friends, subscribe to the channel. And um, I hope I hope you stay safe. Happy coding. Peace.